Well, they let you in a prison, like, on that side of things. I've dragged us in once or twice when I'm one of the guns, so when yeah, I'm one of the guns, I'm trouble yeah. going in. <laughs> it's a strange predicament, you know? You go into the talking and not getting nicked. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've dragged us in once or twice when they wouldn't let us out. So have you been in any schools? Not as yet, because, like I said, we went to get past, you know? So uh, it's a slow process, unfortunately. Hmm. It's a slow process. I think people, when they can, oh, criminals, we don't want them in here. Well, have those documents, but they'd rather have somebody come back from a background where they've got no experience whatsoever. Yeah. And they think these people are going to educate them, and they're yeah. not. They're not them doing that with hardship, hunger, hardship. Was it easy for you to get into skills, Sean? Because our crime was in America, not here. Because um, I was telling my story, and the DBS check thing tells a bit of that it's not a problem. It's like. Um, they're lucky for people with sex offences mainly to not yeah. to stop them getting in schools. Mm -hmm. um, if you and and drugs education under the PSHE curriculum kind of created a job opportunity for me because I was a drug criminal. Yeah, there's so, sex offences, but they, I mean they're not, they're not really going to have highly violent people in there either, are they? Violent crimes might be a problem. Um, High profile criminals, well, if you it's you like, yeah, imagine. Imagine. they get past that door, you know. They hear your name and they're going, oh, yeah, the alternative reason and murders, you know. But man, it's genuine, I want to actually do some good, you know. Yeah. And I believe I'll get to talk one kid who did life a crime, I've just succeeded. You've helped so. someone out, haven't you? Aye, aye. Do you have young people reaching out to you in your community? Yes, I do, yeah, very regular. I'll always get somebody to come to the house, to someone's father, he'll come over and talk to his laddie, you know. And I'll come and put the fear I've got them sometimes, you know. They think they're going to come and sit there and go, oh, Steve's going to come and cuddle us and all that. I'll no, no, I won't do that. I'll tell them exactly what you're going to, what you're going to face in prison, son. For young people watching this, then, what, what would you tell them? Well, you know, as I've lived this life. And I've gotten to the top of my profession. I didn't... I didn't choke the to how they told them because I got beat of a rule do man, nothing like that. I finished at the top of my profession. I wish I'd devoted my life to a business, you know, because it's just been a waste of fucking life, to be honest. The time I've spent in prison, I would have had more children. I believe your wealth should be judged by the health of your children, not by what your financial bank account should be. You're still young, though. I'm 54, you know, but I believe I can do some good and I want to do some good, you know. And you're yeah, getting back what I was saying. I've been there, seen there, done it. You know, I'm speaking from my experience. Do you have any yeah. regrets? I got caught a few times, you know. <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got, I'm honest with you, I'm honest yeah. with you, of course. Because it's not until you actually serve them long-term sentences that you're realising, you, as I said before, when my son comes in, says, I've got a dad. Yeah. These things hurt, you know, I'm only human like everybody else, you know. That would hurt, that gets It did, it did. It did, you know. Um, and they don't say it to hurt you, they even say that just... Just generally, it's a baby, you know. You're yeah. married, only four, it's about five at a time. So... Uh, Came when I was talking to my mum one day, and she says, "Me, Steve, look at please how I consider." I says, "Ma, for you, I want to turn my life around." Unfortunately, by the time I started trying to like to put the book in progress, my mum took took early and she had a stroke, um, and she didn't get to see that light of that path I've led. You know, so I'm doing it for her. You know, I want to do yeah, it for her, not course. just for myself, but let me mark me. It, it, it gives us a, the push to go forward. Yeah. You know. And that's what my I said. mum was a highly intelligent person, you know? she was a civil servant. Attraction as she said to me, Dad, I do not know. <laughs> well, you yeah, books but... the right way forward, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to glamorise crime like any film. I'm not I'm only sure what effect crime has on you, you know. You, you know, and they say, yes, it's good times, it's bad times. But you know, you, you've got the effect it has on the kids and that. Yeah. You know, it, it changes them, it changes them, you know, and I wish I had been there all them years. Unfortunately, I wasn't, but I see that ever in my ways now, and I wish to go forward. Yeah. And do some good. Back in the day when you went over to Spain, was it like sort of, you watched the movie The Business? It's just like that. Was it just like that, just yeah? Like, it was for me. It That'd was for me. fucking brilliant, that, like. Uh, uh, Half our friends, um, we, we party with a dead now. Every year we get another word, another one has died. Have you lost a lot of people on the way? Of course I have, yeah. Yeah, I have. I have. We've been shot dead, not you know. Yeah. Friends, family. It's bad when you go more funerals than Christians, isn't it? Sad, isn't it? It is, isn't Sad. it, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I look at a lot of misery and that, you know. And I look at, like, say, in the thing, like, say, when the persecution will ever stop us knowing from a place, my dad, my dad got uh, a man came forward and he says, My dad, he says, Listen, he says, I've got paperwork there. He says, I've hacked into the national computer. He says, And I've got evidence there that your son, John, was fitted up. My brother, John, was done 15 years at the time for. He got found not guilty for his depot, security found depot, uh, security depot, sorry, 
Bob Dutt, he got no guilty, you know, he got guilty of robbing a security van of 300 grand or something. And he received a 15 year sentence. The man says he had evidence to prove this. So he got somebody, he feed me, he feed me dad, drip feeding him. He made him meet the same. My dad was looking at the paperwork. He put a gun to my dad's head there. Dad jumped to one side, he shot him in the jaw. Came, the bullet came from the other side there. Um, I got a, I got, I got word came from us, you know, and I, I rushed to the hospital. When I rushed to the hospital, these cars outside the window where the bullets went through, that's there. Uh, yeah, all the glasses all over, there's blood all over the car. So I rushes in. He's on here, his face is swelling up with a bullet, bullet wound. And um, the man is on the telephone and he's pleading. He's saying, Stephen, he says, look at the special funds, man, let's do it. You know, and you know, bear in mind, the man's not going to stop. He's just trying to kill me for that now. He's going to try, he knows I'm a danger and he's going to yeah. come try and kill me. Jesus. So I didn't want to rave him, you know, to be honest. what I said to him was, I was trying to sweet talk to him, you know, I says, listen, I'll do anything to let my dad live, to please, you know. And he stood for me, he says, I'll see you in the park in 15 minutes. I thought, well, he must have thought, well, that wouldn't get as much time. But I was Elzik, you know, West End, a lot of active criminals, a lot of active armed robbers, and a lot of people doomed up. So I'm well got an area, and, you know, my life's in danger. I explained it to certain, certain people that come to help us straight away. And they says, look, if he's there, just make your way to the bushes, around the lake, and I walked around the lake, he says, he's going to approach you. So this man had come up to us. But he says, that's, that's not his feeling when you walk in the room, waiting to be shot. You know, but the man is going to, you know, he's going to kill me or he's, he's trying to kill me dad. He's going to try and kill the rest of us. So uh, this man approached us, come walking to us. And I could hear, I was right next to the bush, it was pitch black. And I could hear the, I could hear the guns cocking. And um, all the answer was, was a light. It was just somebody in the park and asked for a light. And I thought, fuck, that was, that was close. He went from there, the man handy selling the police station. You could have gone for that person though, couldn't you? No, no. The man handy selling the police station that night, you know. I got nicked and remanded at a later time and they put me in a cell below him. So he thought it was great all day, having gone on how much pleasure I got shooting my father. And the school just come up the door, he went, Stephen, I've had enough of him, how about And he went, <laughs> oh, the geezer's door. The geezer was crying, stop, for he teased us and everything, I was just teasing us off, come here, bully fucking out, you know something. You know all the nastiness he come out with, yeah. you know. Um, obviously I wanted to hurt him, and I would have done if I get of my hands Of course you would have. Um, well, lo and behold, he, get, he went to court, he had been a police informer, and they says he had been so helpful enough for me. A police didn't know what to do, so they gave him four years for assassination attempt on my dad, you know. Oh, yes. um, my pal, my pal put a hundred odd stitches in his face, and they gave him four years for doing that. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, should have been his juggler, you know. Oh, so that's what, that's what it is, you know. Like, say, if you're an informer, you're kind of going to be in there, kind of try that sort of thing. Yeah. If people got a problem with you, though, they should take it out on you, not your family. That's fucked up, isn't it? Of course, of course. I mean, I, only in rule like, isn't it, really? If you've got a problem with someone, you don't go to the mum and dad's house and take it out on them. It's low, isn't it? Well, people are what they are, you know, and it's, it's like in life, if you know, if you have one-man band, you've got to accept it. If you were a group of people yeah, who will help you and support you, it's different, yeah. you know, and I think it's a bit of a can prevent some of you know. I still like to, even though I'm not an active criminal anymore, I still get a lot of hassle off the know from the police regular. I was lying in bed watching a bit of TV, and he has a noise outside. And what their new, new gimmick is in Newcastle now will be all over the country. The top of places, street lamps, they put little domes in them and they put the hidden cameras in them, you know. So it gets up, takes one down, there was a four-way camera. But I mean, the lamppost is only six inches from my door, not from my mm. back yet. So I've got one at the back, one at the front, and every junction, every road leading off my estate, it's got a covert police camera on it, and the, the, the top of the lamppost. So this is, what, this is what you've got to pull me, you know, but I'm not doing anything. I had, I've just I've, I've received an Osmond one every six months or so. Is it very unique privacy that? Yeah, uh, I think um, as I say, like I've received an Osmond, I've received Osmond ones quite often. You know, um, I think it might be a funny thing <laughs> might prevent them coming. <laughs> Jesus, how do they can come? But they can't let them in. I'll not let them out. <laughs> if you stay out of trouble, though, the cameras are I mean, they're even better because there's evidence that you're not doing fuck all, aren't they? They're not bothered, you know, they're not bothered up there. Oh, well, we, you know, they're just, yeah. as I said, I've been, I've been arrested for a variety of serious crimes. But it's not the crimes itself, it's a calibre of the people what's had were arrested. One man got to me, me brother John, arrested for, me brother was nicked for murder. And, um, this year, the, on the last year of the trail, somebody contacted one of the jury members. And the only people who had access to them was the North American police, you know. Mm. So uh, they, got this, they got this junkie to come forward and say as, um, that he had made the phone call for her. Which, if I was going to get a somebody to take some, I wouldn't be getting a junkie involved in anything, you no. know. So 
I get Nick to put on remand. I've got a trial with no jury. For it was only the second time in the country, I got a trial with no jury, you know. So my barrister, my QC, came to see and she went, Stephen, I actually know this judge personally. He's already found you guilty. He's going to get a life sentence and he'll die in a special unit, by one of them SSUs, unless you get the court case turned over. So you get a trial with a jury. The trial started. Now we've got a massive compensation claim going in for, the, for what they've done to her there. Now bear in mind, the prosecutor stood in court and says, I should be asking for the life sentence for the Sears brothers and life should mean life. This man knew we were innocent people. Now I can't go and discuss too much of this now because it is a legal situation happening now with a compensation claim. But uh, I'll get back to that the next episode when I speak. Yeah, true. That's terrible, that little stitching you up like that. Everyone's entitled to a fucking jury for God's the sake. The caliber of the witness. The man was a junkie who had married a Thai prostitute. Why the hell would you get himself, you know, <laughs> know what I mean? You wouldn't, you wouldn't get the time of day. Fuck, you tell. So he, was, he married a Thai prostitute. He was in one room where his missus was knocking the knocking, knocking services out by two and a half quid and five pound a pop, you know? You know, and this is the caliber of the people, you know? Fucking low life to get up in court and then they... Because it's against you, they're going to fucking accept this person's word, you know? Well, a junkie who's living off in moral learnings, he's not exactly... A, a, Suppose he even let him on the jury. He's not honest. What? Suppose he even let him on the jury. He wasn't on the jury, he was, he was, a, witness. He was a witness. Ah, right. He was a witness, you know? Yeah. He witnessed nothing but the scissors. He's the adamant that we used two telephone boxes and they knew, that they knew, they knew we hadn't. They hadn't been used to it, they knew he was telling lies. There's the only witness against him, there was no other evidence of just a junkie. And he says, sir, so all he was, he was at his telephone, so all he was after was money, money, money off, off, of, your, off his handler. <coughs> yeah. A lot of them have got their own crimes and then their cases go away, don't they? Some do some do, yeah, yeah. So what what is your life like now then? Um, a lot more busier since with the film suppress you know, like I said, we're gonna hopefully well, it's coming together slowly but surely. Uh, it's hard work. It's hard work to get it done. It's it's excitable, you know, it's enjoyable. And we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward, yeah. you know, and uh, we're gonna give like a lot of like say people in the in Newcastle and the northeast who's Act us, but never had an opportunity. So we're gonna give them a little bit of an opportunity, and maybe a stepping stone. It may change the course of somebody's life for the better, and hopefully it will do. You know. Yeah. So uh, one or two ex criminals, I've taught myself. Well, come and give it a go. Come and give it a go, and if it's any good, you'll have a part in the film. Mm -hmm. These are active criminals, and I've spoke to the families, and they went, Stephen, if you can do that, I've done much in the kids. If you can do this well, we such and such. We would be over the moon, and the kid is over. The, he's, he's he's excited. You got to get Jimmy Nail. Yeah, it's better than him. <laughs> 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 Are there any of your craziest stories that we've missed out? When I finish this, there'll be about a hundred I can think of, you know. Yeah, uh, but yeah. But it's been enjoyable, don't you, lad? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it's what really you're doing. Really Huge pleasure having you on as well. Yeah, I'll be back again, good, lad. I'll be yeah, back yeah. again. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Especially when the second book comes out. What? Tell everybody what the second book's going to be called. It's going to be called Operation CS. Um, it's basically about a man who, a heroin addict who decides to get, no of the police were feeding him heroin, and he was accusing him of different murders, you know, and like, there's a variety of unsolved murders there. Um, that's the one who accused him of having the police officer shot, you know. Um, four, four unsolved murders, and and people getting kneecapped, you know, legs shot off, not, you know. It's just, I read it, you know, and it was about me, not to be honest, I felt a bit frightened. That's how, that's how <laughs> outrageous it is, you know. It was so bad, I said, this, this is gonna be turned into a book. <laughs> so that's what I went with that one, you know. And if people want to contact you, what's the preferred way of them contacting you? For me, so that's not. Play me brief. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get new comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you have, do you have social media stuff? Yeah, I'm on social media. You can catch us on the. Yeah. Um, we've got a page on Facebook, the CS page, you know, and the CS film. So we'll put your Facebook page in the description yeah, box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why? Yeah, and all the links to the books. And if people want to send you a message, can they send you a message on the Facebook page? Of course they can. Yeah, we'll yeah. give you all them details, you know, and they say, contact yeah. me or Steve Riff, you know. And his yeah. mobile number is. <laughs> 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 so if you've enjoyed this, please put your questions and comments below. Huge thank you to all the new subscribers. If you've not subscribed, it's free. Subscription logo is in the bottom right hand corner. Huge thank you to all the people who've donated on PayPal, Patreon, Just Giving, Subscribe, Star. To keep the production of the podcast in the studio level of sound engineers, cameramen, and, and to, to bring down brilliant guests like Stephen today. So we, we thank you for all your support as well. So cheers from Liverpool. Let me give you a hug, man. And thanks for buying my T-shirts too. Brilliant. Thank God you. Yeah.
Thanks, big fella. Where did it go?